morning children hope everybody is well um are you guys all excited to start to go back to school next week <laughs> i know your mommy and daddies must be very excited to have you at school um and i'm very glad to be able to have class with you again today i hope we want to get to see each other very soon but in case anyway even if we don't um i miss every one of you and i hope to see you very soon so children, today before we start, um, we are going to do a quick activity together. Um, so I want you to get paper and I want you to get pencils with your mommy and your daddy. Um, and I want you to get ready with a blank piece of paper and a colouring pencil. Okay, um, I, you can pause here while you go and get ready for your activity. But for the rest of you who have that, I want you to use the colouring paper and pencils and draw for me what are three things that you would like to give thanks to God for this week? Okay, so just, just three things that you can think about. I uh, can take your time and think about and pause this while you are thinking. Um, but I want you to think of three things that you would like to thank God for this week. And once you have done with your drawing, please ask your mommy or your daddy to take a photo and share it with me um, and send the photo to me. So since I asked you to think of the three things that you are grateful for or you are thankful for this week, I'm also going to share with you the three things that um, Teacher Sharon thinks of and wants to give thanks for this week. So the first thing I want to give thanks for is for flowers and for nature that God created. So this is a picture that I took this morning right outside my window. Can you see the yellow color flowers on the tree? Um, I want to thank God for the flowers and for all of nature that God created. And we remember what, do we remember when God created the trees and the sky and the flowers? I hope you remember because we went through this and we learned about the seven, the day, seven days that God used to create the world, right? Six days of creation and on the last day he rests. So this is one thing that I want to thank God for this week. Another thing that I want to thank God for is for family and for my cat. Ponyo, this is my cat. Some of you may have seen my cat before when she was a small kitten. Now she's very big and she's a bit fat. Um, but I want to thank God for family and for Ponyo. Um, it may not be very easy sometimes. We spend so much time together now. But actually being able to spend time together during this time is also a blessing from God. And the last thing I wanted to give thanks to God for this week is for work. So I'm going to play you this quick video. <laughs> this is a video that I made. So obviously, this is a keyboard and you, some of you may be very familiar with, a com with the computer and seeing your mommy and daddy work as well. But in, I am thankful that we have work also, that God has given us jobs and we are able to work and make money. And especially in times like this, when everything is very difficult, some people may not have enough work, I'm also very thankful for work. <laughs> so those are the three things that I am very thankful to God for this week. And I hope that you will draw um, the three things that you are very grateful for or thankful for with your mommy and your daddy. And you can take that picture and send it to Teacher Shirin. I hope you enjoy the video that of my cat. All right, children. So we're going to learn about today's Bible lesson. Today's Bible lesson comes from the book of Luke. And today's lesson is about how God is faithful. Specifically, how God is faithful to this man called Simeon. Simeon is this man here in the front carrying this little baby. And we're going to listen to the story of Simeon today. And it's about how Simeon um, met Jesus Christ and why and what was the important lesson that God wanted to teach us through the life of Simeon. So first, um, this is Mary and this is Joseph. So Mary is of course um, the mother of baby Jesus Christ and Joseph is the father of baby Jesus Christ, right? Um, Mary and Joseph had come to the temple with baby Jesus. They had brought baby Jesus to the temple, which is what they used to call the church, um, and brought a special offering to, uh, to the temple to present baby Jesus to the Lord and to give that special offering to God, to give thanks. Now, there once was a man who loved God and who lived in Jerusalem. His name was Simeon, Simeon which, is an, which is the old version for the name Simon. 
Now, long, long time ago, God had made a special promise to Simon. God had promised Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the Savior who was coming into the world. But that was all God had told him. God had told Simeon that one day you will see the Savior who is coming into the world. And before that, you would not die. But God did not tell Simeon who this Savior was or what this Savior even looked like. It's as if, you know, teacher says to you today that, you know, in the future, you will meet, um, you will meet somebody. And that's all. I don't tell you what the person will look like. I also don't tell you when you will meet the person. I also don't tell you why you will meet the person. But God told Simeon this, and Simeon believed in God. So he waited and he waited. Simeon knew that God always keeps his promises, so he did not give up hope. And in his waiting, Simeon had become an old man. And even though he was already very old, he still waited every day trusting in God that he would one day see this, um, the Savior who was coming into this world. So one day, the Holy Spirit led Simeon to hurry over to the temple. It was time for God to keep his promise to God, to Simeon. How do you think Simeon felt as he waited at the temple? Do you think he was excited? Do you think he was scared? He must have been both excited as well as scared, right? Because God did not really tell him who was, what, the Savior looked like or why the Savior was coming. But this was something that Simeon had waited for a long time. And so Simeon went into the temple and he saw Mary and Joseph coming into the temple with baby Jesus. And Simeon then knew that God had fulfilled his promise by showing him that Jesus Christ was the Savior. Even though Simeon had never seen baby Jesus before, he knew right away that Baby Jesus was God's son, and Simeon knew that Jesus was the Savior. So Simeon took baby Jesus in his arms and praised God. So Sovereign Lord, Simeon said, Now I am ready to die, for I see with my own eyes the promised child who is the Savior of the world and the glory of your people in Israel. So Simeon finally realized that God has what was true and what Simeon had patiently waited for really came, came true. And Simeon prayed and praised God in front of Mary and Joseph, sharing with them about what promise God had given to Simeon. Mary and Joseph were amazed at the things that Simeon said about Jesus. It was wonderful news for Mary and Joseph that baby Jesus would grow up to be the savior of the world, just as God promised. The Holy Spirit made known these truths to Simeon, and now Mary and Joseph also knew it as well. So besides Simeon, there was another woman called Anna who was also at the temple. Anna was a widow, meaning that her husband had died already, and she was an old woman. She too had a promise from God that um, she had been worshipping and fasting and praying every day and every night for a saviour that God had shown her. And she was not sure when that saviour would come as well. But um, when she saw Mary and Joseph, she gave thanks to God. She had been worshipping and praying at every day and every night. And finally, she saw the promise that God had given to not just her, but to also to Simeon, that there will be a baby that will grow up to become the saviour of the world. And Anna shared this story and told people of God's promises. So what do you think God was trying to teach us through the lesson of Simeon and through the lesson of Anna? God was trying to teach us the story of being faithful, that God is faithful to what he has promised us and God is faithful to the promises that he has given to us. So where can we find all these promises? We can find all these promises in the Bible and in the Bible is where God has his word and that's where we learn about the different things that God has promised. So children, when we say God is faithful, it means that God keeps his promises. 
just as how God kept his promise to Simeon that one day Simeon would see the saviour of the world. So now when Mary and Joseph had heard all these things from Simeon and from Anna, they had done everything they were supposed to do at the temple and they returned home to Nazareth with baby Jesus. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's grace was upon him. So children, before we go into the memory verse, let's recap some of the lessons that we learned today in the story from Luke. So remember, why did Simeon go to the temple? So if you remember, Simeon had gone to the temple because he had felt led by the Holy Spirit um, to see baby Jesus. And why, did he, why was seeing baby Jesus important? Because baby Jesus was the savior of the world and God had promised Simeon that Simeon would not die until he had seen the savior of the world. Why did Mary and Joseph go to the temple? Mary and Joseph went to the temple to present baby Jesus to God and to give a special offering. What did Simeon do when he saw Jesus? When Simeon saw Jesus, he took baby Jesus in his arms and praised God for sending his son, the Savior. But how did Simeon know that Jesus was the Savior? Simeon knew because God told him. And did Mary and Joseph believe the things Simeon said about Jesus? Yes, they did. And they gave thanks to God for it. God promised Simeon that he would see the Savior and God kept this promise. God also helps us to know Jesus as we learn more about him from the Bible. We've learned today that Jesus is God's son and he is the promised Savior sent to save his people. So the memory verse for today is Luke Chapter 2, verse 11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So we learned today, in today's Bible lesson, we learned about the importance, uh, we learned about God being faithful and that God, what does it mean when God is faithful? It means that God keeps his promises that he has given to us, which we can find in the Bible. So children, I want to ask you, you know, what are some things that you have been praying for or what are some things that you want to pray for this week? Prayer is the way that we talk to God, but it's also the way that we give our requests to God. And when we say God is faithful, God will always answer our prayers. Um, sometimes he will not answer them in the way that we, we want them to, but he will answer in a way that is part of God's plan and also what is best for us. So I want you to ask you children what you are praying for this week. Can you share with your mommy and your daddy what are some things that you want to pray to God? What are some things you want to ask to God for this week? Teacher Sharon is going to pray this week, especially for each and every one of you, because this week I know many of you are going back to school. And it is also a, a lot of things that you have to adjust to. You have spent two months at home with your mommy and your daddy and maybe going to school um, you may have forgotten what it's like to be in school but you can go and see your friends see your teachers but also we must remember to be safe because there is still the virus so I will be praying for you this week for you to be safe as you go to school and I'll also be praying for those of you who are studying at home I will also still be praying for you to be safe and to be um, to have a good period of learning and studying together with your mommy and your daddy. All right? Um, before we end today, we also want to talk about our catechism questions. Just to recap, our questions 6 to 10. So question 6, is there more than one true God? The answer is no, there is only one true God. Catechism question 7, in how many persons does this God exist? The answer is, God exists in three persons. Catechism question 8, name these three persons. The answer is, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Catechism question 9, what is God? God is a spirit and does not have body like men. Catechism question 10, where is God? God is everywhere. So children, we have learned today about God's faithfulness 
end, we have learned about what being faithful means. It means to keep God's promises to us, which are found in his Bible. So children, let, will you close your eyes with me? Let us pray for us before we end today's lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, God, for the lesson that you have given us about being faithful. We want to thank you for the lesson of Sinyan, where you showed us that you kept your promises. We want to pray for each and every person here today, Lord, that we want to continue to be safe. We also want to continue to pray for all the children who are going back to school this week. We want to pray that, Lord, you continue to protect them and you also protect their daddies and their mummies if they're going back to work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, children, this is the end of today's lesson. I hope to see you very, very soon. Be good.